Hello there, I'm Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now you may have heard of the term RAID. Now I'm not talking about the insecticide that you sprayed to get rid of spiders and ants and flies, I'm talking about that thing you do with discs to make them perform faster and to give you some kind of resilience, some kind of redundancy. So if you want to find out what is RAID and how it works, please let me explain. So RAID stands for a redundant array of inexpensive discs or a redundant array of independent discs. Now basically what happens is you can combine discs together to give you improved performance and offer some resilience, some redundancy in case of hardware failure. So let's start with RAID 0, the simplest of all of these configurations. Now each RAID level has a 0, RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5 and RAID 10 we're going to look at. Now RAID 0 is the simplest one and it starts with two discs in which the data is interleaved between the two discs. So if you were writing A, B, C, D you'd write A on disc 1, then you'd write B on disc 2, C on disc 1, D on disc two and so on. And what that means is you've now got two discs which you can read and write to, so effectively you double the performance because while one bit is being written and the drive is busy on drive one, drive two can get on with its stuff. And when you read back the data, if you're reading back a very big file, you can start reading it interleaved between the two discs so you get back the data a lot quicker. Now the problem with RAID 0 is if one of the disks fails, you lose everything. And that's because the data isn't half on one disk in the sense of half your files are on one disk and half your files, half of each file is on each disk. So every photo would be chopped in half, the file system gets chopped in half. So basically whenever one disk fails, you lose everything. So you get greater performance, but then you get the danger of if a disk failure happens, you lose all of your data. Now if you are configuring uh, RAID 0, then basically if you have two one terabyte drives, then your total storage is two terabytes. And the reason I mention that is that later on when we look at other RAID levels, you'll see that actually the total space that you have in the physical drives is not what you get out of the array once it's been configured. Now the next RAID level is RAID level 1, or mirroring as we call it. Now in mirroring you again start with two disks and everything that's written on disk 1 is also written on disk 2. So if you were to write A, B, C, D then A would be written on disk 1 and A would be written on disk 2. B would then be written to disk 1 and then B would be written to disk 2. Now in terms of the write performance there's no increase here because the same data has to be written and it takes just as long for each drive to write that data. But when you come to reading it back you've now got two drives that have copies of exactly the same data so you can read back from both drives at the same time and therefore almost double your read performance. It also has the advantage that if one drive fails you still have a complete copy on the other drive so this offers some resilience. Now the downside of RAID 1 is that you only get the space equivalent of one of the disks. So if you've got two one terabyte drives then you've only got one terabyte of actual usable data because everything is being duplicated on the other drive. Now there's also RAID 2, 3 and 4 and they're not used very much today but the next popular RAID level is RAID level 5 and that starts with three disks. Now with the three disks, the third disk, or in fact it's actually uh, across all the drives, distributed across all the drives, but the third disk enables it to be parity information. Now I'm going to do a whole video on the power of XOR for things like parity and for things like encryption, uh, but basically it's enough to know that if you've got the parity uh, if you've got A written on one drive and B written on another drive, then the parity information will allow you to recreate either A or B if one of those drives fails. So it offers a system of resilience. So you start with three drives of which one is used, or the space is used for that for um, parity. So what happens if you write A, B, C, D, A will get written to drive one, B will get written to drive 2 and then the parity information will get written to drive 3. On the next go around C would be written to drive 1, the parity now would switch to drive 2 and then D would be written on the third drive and then the third right way around the parity would be written on the first drive. And this means that all of the parity information is distributed across all of the drives and the drives are all the data is distributed across the drive so you get great read and write performance because you're writing to multiple drives at the same time, you're reading from multiple drives at the same time and you get the resilience that if one drive fails then actually you've got all the data because of the parity data in there somewhere so you can rebuild that drive. Now the thing about RAID 5 is that if you've got three one terabyte drives then you end up getting two terabytes of usable data because one third of the data is being used to store parity information. 
Now talking of drive rebuild, there is this one part of RAID that does give a disadvantage that while that rebuild is happening, if you have had a drive failure and you're trying to rebuild that drive, it really does slow down your RAID array because it has to recover maybe terabytes of data. In fact, I had a, a, a disk failure. I've got RAID 1 in my desktop PC and I had a RAID failure. I replaced the hard disk and it took for a two terabyte drive, it took it about five or six hours to repair the missing drive and bring it up to speed, to synchronize it to be up to the same level so it can carry on working as a fully functional RAID array. Now imagine if you've got pentabytes of data, that can be quite difficult. So there's a lot of planning on a huge server scale to actually make sure that you don't kind of cripple your systems when you have a RAID failure. But in terms of kind of home servers, in terms of desktops and things like that, then that really isn't an issue because you, you're really grateful that you didn't lose the drive, you didn't lose the data on the drive and actually having to rebuild the array it isn't much of a hassle. And the fourth and final level I'd like to talk about today is RAID 10. It's actually technically RAID 1 plus RAID 0. And this starts with four drives. And what you do is on the first two drives, you basically employ mirroring, you employ RAID 1. So everything written onto drive 1 gets written to drive 2. So you write A, it gets copied onto drive 1 and gets copied onto drive 2, mirroring. And then you take a second two set of drives, drives 3 and 4, and what you do there is you do another uh, RAID of mirroring. So you have two RAID arrays that are independent of each other. And so that everything is written on, on the first drive gets written onto the second drive in both RAID arrays. And then you combine those two RAID arrays together with level uh, zero striping so that what is written on one uh, is interleaved with what's written on the other. So A would be written on the first RAID set, B would be written on the second RAID set, C would be written on the first RAID set, and D would be written on the second RAID set. But inside the RAID set, those would be mirrored. So that gives you the advantage that if a drive fails across a RAID 0 array, you still have some resistance because you can replace the array because it's the disk because it really is a, a mirror at the very lowest level. And it gives you the advantage of the performance because you've now got four disks of which you are reading and writing to in a uh, striped manner, but also you've got the mirroring, which means that the data is protected. So that's RAID 1 plus 0, often called RAID 10. Now the reason why this is important is because you can buy RAID uh, in external USB enclosures, you can get enclosures with two, three, four, five hard disks in them and you put them in and using the software you can configure that external uh, storage unit as RAID and then it just talks to your, uh, your PC over USB and it just sees it as an extra drive, drive E or whatever you've plugged into your hard disk. You can also get Windows to do this, Windows 10 Pro will allow you to do this uh, actually inside of uh, Windows and say use these hard disks in a RAID configuration some motherboards actually support RAID. My motherboard on my desktop PC supports RAID 0 and RAID 1. So in the BIOS, you set it up and say these drives uh, should be used in a RAID. Obviously, Linux will do it, and I think Mac OS will do it. So basically, RAID is actually quite prevalent, but not everybody is using it. So maybe when you're next looking for your next motherboard or you're looking for a new external hard drive, you should think about RAID because it really could be a great use to you. So I'm Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. We're really trying to build up the community here, so it'd be great if you could share this video on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification icon so you get a message every time I drop a new video here. You can also find me on uh, at Gary Explained on Twitter, Gary Explained on Instagram. Please do go down into the comments. I'm gonna see you down there. Tell me what you think of this video. Tell me what other videos you want to see. And as for me, I'll see you in my next video.